Swami Prabhupada ki jai jai Vishnu Pad Paramahang Sapari Vajra Chari Sotra Satri Simad Bhakti Saranta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Prabhupada ki jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrind ki jai Namacharya Silhardas Thakur ki jai Prems Goho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Sri Dreda Ghadar Sri Ghor Bhakti Vrind ki jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopi Nath Shamakund Radha Kund Giri Govadan ki jai Vrindavan Dham ki jai Navadvipa Dham ki jai Gangamaya ki jai Jamunamaya ki jai Bhakti Devi ki jai Tulsi Maharani ki jai Samaveda Bhakti Vrind ki jai All glorious to the Simul Devotees All glorious to the Simul Devotees All glorious to the Simul Devotees Thank you very much. All oh, glories to Sri Sri Guru and Gauranga. All oh, glories to the Prabhupada. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Stai Vodhile Smade Jabba Daka Swami Nita Namane. Nama Charya Padaya Nita Kripa Nani Goksa Dham Naka Kamtane. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Stai Vodhile Smade Bhakti Varanta Swami Nita Namane. Namaste Saraswati Deva Gauravani Bacharya Nirshe Shumyani Pastade Stane. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness Chapter 12, Devotional Service, Text Number 16 Please repeat. Anapekshaha Suchi Daksha Udasinaha Gatavyata Sarva Aramba Parichagi Yaha Matbaktaha Saha Me Priya Anap Anapeksha suti, anapeksha suci daksha, udasino gatavyata, sarvaramba parichagi, yomat bhakta same priya, yomat bhakta same priya, anapeksha suci daksha, Udasino gatavyata Sarvaramba parityagi Yomad bhakta same priya Anapeksha suchir daksha Udasino gatavyata Sarvaramba parityagi Yomad bhakta same priya Anapeksha suchir daksha Rashino katavyata Sarvaramba parichagi Yomat bhakta same priya Anapeksha suchir daksha Udasino gatavyata Sarvaramba parichagi Yomad bhakta same priya Nautiksha suchir daksha Udasino gatavyata Sarva Ramba Parityagi Yomad Bhakta Same Priya Sir, would you like to chant? Would you like to chant? Anapeksha Shuchir Daksha Udasino Gatavyata Sarvaramba parichagi Yomad bhakta same priya Anapeksha 
anapeksha siti irdaksha udasino katavyataha sarva ramba parityagi yo mad bhakta same priya anapeksha siti irdaksha Udasino Gatavyata Sarvaramba Parityagi Yomad Bhakta Same Priyaha Would you like to change? Anapeksha Shutir Jaksha Udasino Gatavyata Sarvaramba Parichagi Yomad Bhakta Same Priya Please repeat Anapekshaha Neutral Suchi Pure Daksha Expert, Udashina, free from care, Gatavyataha, freed from all distress, Sarva Aramba, of all endeavors, Parityagi, renouncer, Yaha, anyone who, Matbaktaha, my devotee. Saha, me, um, he, me, to me, priya, very dear. Translation. My devotee, who is not dependent on the ordinary course of activities, who is pure, expert, without cares, free from all pains, and not striving for some result, is very dear to me. Purport. Money may be offered to a devotee, but he should not struggle to acquire it. If automatically, by the grace of the Supreme, money comes to him, he is not agitated. Naturally, a devotee takes a bath at least twice in a day and rises early in the morning for devotional service. Thus, he is naturally clean both inwardly and outwardly. A devotee is always expert because he fully knows the essence of all activities of life and he is convinced of the authoritative scriptures. A devotee never takes the part of a particular party. Therefore, he is carefree. He is never pained because he is free from all designations. He knows that his body is a designation. So if there are some bodily pains, he is free. The pure devotee does not endeavor for anything which is against the principles of devotional service. For example... Constructing a big building requires great energy and a devotee does not take to such business if it does not benefit him by advancing his devotional service. He may construct a temple for the Lord and for that he may take all kinds of anxiety but he does does not construct a big house for his personal relations. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshur Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobhistang Stapitang Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayang Dadati Swapadantikang Vandehang Sri Guru Sri Uta Parakamalang Sri Gurun Vaishnavangscha Sri Rupang Sagrajatang Sahagana Raganatang Vitang Tang Sajivang Sadvaitang Savadutam Parijana Saitang Krishna Chaitanya Devang Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitangscha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kancha Nagorangi Radhe Vrinda Vanishwari Vrishabhanu Sutadevi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyayabacha 
Patitanang Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare I would like to recite one more verse. Please hold on. This verse is called Prayojan Adideva Pranam. Sriman Rasa Rasa Rambi Vangsi Vata Tasti Taha Karshan Venu Swaner Gopir Gopinath Sri Estunaha Sri Srila Gopinath, who originated the transcendental mellow of the Rasa dance, stands on the shore in Varnas in Vamsivat and attracts the attention of the coward damsels with the sound of a celebrated flute. May they all confer upon us their benediction. So the verse Anapeksha Suchir Daksha Udasino Gatavyata Sarva Ramba Parityagi Yo Mat Bhakta Same Priyaha Yo Mat Bhakta That sounds really cool, no? Same Priyaha That Bhakta is very Priya to me He's very dear to me Yo, yo Mat Bhakta Same Priya That would be nice to remember that, no? And all these slokas You know Pralanda Maharaj? Of course you know he knows all the slokas, 700. He, you go to his room, and then he'll say, if he's in the mood, he say, you call out a number, I'll call out the verse. You call out any number, chapter 12, verse 16, and he will recite this verse. It's very impressive. He's been a brahmachari practically all his life. And now, of course, now he's in Yasi. Um, so yeah, we should try to learn these verses. This is also a very nice verse. This is Prabhupada's translation. Krishna says, My devotee who is not dependent on the ordinary course of activities. So Prabhupada says, Money may be offered to a devotee, but he should not struggle to acquire it. To, to acquire it. If automatically, by the grace of the Supreme, money comes to him, he is not agitated. Yeah, so the ordinary course of activities is... You know, generally uh, summarized in the Srimad Bhagavatam as eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. So a devotee is not, Krishna says here, he is not dependent on that. This is the ordinary course, generally, that people, they eat, they sleep, they defend themselves. So defending means, you know, having a job, building a house, putting a lock on the door. And like that, you're defending yourself and your family and maybe your dog, or your dog is defending you, so or both. So like that, eating, sleeping, mating, defending. So Prabhupada says, if that is all you do, then it's just polished animal life. You might have very nice clothes, you might look very nice, you might smell very nice. Still, the activities are the same as an animal. So sometimes... Biologists, they are very intrigued. What is the difference between men and animals? And they get all worked up about this. Because animals are very intelligent. In fact, if you go in Africa and you meet a lion, you will see that he will be more intelligent than you in running. <laughs> he will catch you very quickly and he will kill you. So, unless you've got a big gun. So, he's very, very smart. A lion. He is more, and he's very, very strong as well. So, in, in that sense, he's more smart than you. Unless you know some super special karate. <laughs> but even then, you're going to be injured, you know? So, um, yeah, that lion is very expert in killing. It, it takes intelligence. It's, you know, it, actually, I saw many nature films. Usually, it doesn't work for him. Like many times, it, it, he fails and he goes hungry. And then when he gets extremely hungry, then he gets so fired up that, that then it ultimately works out. So, but the point is, it takes intelligence to kill a, a, an animal or a human being. So in that sense, he's more intelligent. So that is defending or eating, eating, defending. Um, so, you know, in many ways, animals can be more intelligent than us. 
if it comes to these four things. However, Prabhupada explains that generally there are exceptions. <laughs> there is no animals coming to the Bhagavad Gita class. Uh, I've, heard, I've heard stories in India that, that uh, like a bull, he would come every morning to the Bhagavatam class. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> he would come, like in India generally things are more open and uh, he would just come outside the temple and he would listen and then after the Bhagavatam class he would get, get up and he would walk away. So there are exceptions. Then you have the, some special monkeys in India. But these are exceptional. So generally, that, that doesn't work. It's not, it's not very suitable, actually. To, uh, and they, even if they can listen, they can't really discuss it as, as, we, are, as we are doing. So it's not very suitable. Prabhupada says the greatest danger of the human life form, it's not so much the, the traffic, <laughs> it's not uh, you know, poisonous uh, food, it's to go to the next life and end up as an animal. That is the greatest danger, because now we have this human form, and we can chant Hare Krishna, we can come to the Bhagavad Gita class, and we can make spiritual advancement. In fact, Prabhupada says that we should try and advance completely in this life. We should go back to Godhead in this life. It is possible. If we are, if we are sincere, if we, for instance, follow this simple sloka, we can do it. So... Um, yeah, the human form is equ equipped for that, to make spiritual advancement. And uh, that, is the, that is the point of what Krishna is saying here, that we should not be too much dependent on, for instance, that is what, because Prabhupada explains it very, very perfectly. He brings it back to what we all want, generally, at least a materialistic person. And if, if I look at myself... I count myself to, to that person, at least to some extent, we want to have money. So Prabhupada, he boils it down to that. Money may be offered to a devotee, but he should not struggle to acquire it. So it's, it's very simple. We can, we can make some money, like many devotees, they're kriyastas. There's no problem in making money. It's good, actually, to make money. You can make lots of money for Krishna. The point, however, is we should not struggle too much. Or he probably says, not struggle at all, actually. He doesn't even say it too much. We should not struggle to acquire it. The general rule, what I understand from Prabhupada, eight hours. You work eight hours, you do your best, and then the wife should be happy. You know, you should tell your wife, look, I'm working eight hours, I'm doing my best. You know, like there is the story of the Brahman, and his wife was unhappy. She said, look, you know, we're so poor, why don't you go to your friend Krishna and ask him for some money? So the Brahman, he did that. Still before, the, the wife was more or less content because he was doing his best and she was kind of like tolerating it. But at some stage, the, the wife was like, you know, your friend is so rich, can't you ask him for some donation? So he did that actually. It's a, it's a story in itself. But the point is that we should work about eight hours and the rest we should just reserve for spiritual life, like chanting 16 rounds, uh, like if you're uh, doing, doing puja, uh, it, if you don't live near the temple, then it's recommended that you have deities, either Gornitai deities or my friend is uh, Jagannath uh, deities, Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra Devi. And then you can have, you know, like us, you can have Bhagavad Gita class and you have Arti. So we should make time for that. That is actually what is really important. Because, like I explained, you know, this making money, it is, it is like eating. It is just to eat. And then Prabhupada explains, you can eat from a gold plate or a normal plate. But you can only eat so many chapatis. The king can eat three chapatis or maybe 30, but that's it. And, and we're not different. So that's it. You, you eat a few chapatis and the belly is full. So it doesn't matter so much if you eat very luxurious food or not, or if you eat from a gold plate or not. So the business... You know, a devotee doesn't waste so much time with it, with eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. So, um, yeah, that is, that is kind of my explanation of, uh, of this. The devotee is not dependent on the ordinary course of activities. And like I said, Prabhupada boils it down in making money. And then Prabhupada says, this is also very important, very, very difficult point to uh, realize, if automatically, by the grace of the Supreme, money comes to him, he is not agitated. That's another thing. If we get like a lot of money, like, you know, I'm supposedly, according to spiritual uh, culture, very lucky, because my father 
uh, left his body and he didn't leave me any money. <laughs> so according to our philosophy, I'm very dear to Krishna. <laughs> so I'm a little bit struggling with it, I tell you honestly. So, um, but let's say he would have given me money, like, I don't know, 10,000 euro. Then I probably would have been agitated. That's probably the reason why Krishna didn't give it to me. But that's the point. If we get money somehow, we should not become agitated. Uh, as Prabhupada says at the end of the purport, we should use it for Krishna. For instance, for building a temple for Krishna. We should not use it, as Prabhupada says here. Prabhupada knows us very well. He says, he should not construct a big house for his personal relations. Either himself and his dog or his wife or his friends. You know, you make a big house. Like I was just talking today about this movie, Citizen Kane. It's a, it's a story about a big newspaper guy in America. It, it was kind of like a bio, not a biography, but it was kind of based on this man. He became very angry, actually, on the director. Anyway, the point was this man became very, very rich, and he invited all of these guests into his house. He was a famous man, you know, but he was very unhappy. He, he died a very unhappy man. So that is kind of the moral of this uh, sentence. That, that even if you think some other, you disagree with Prabhupada. Yeah, but it's so much fun to spend money and invite my personal relations. It would, will, will not make you happy. This man was one of the richest men in America. And America is supposedly the number one country, the richest country. So he had everything. He was so powerful. But he was completely, he died an unhappy man. So, you know, don't waste your time with it. Again, we should not struggle to make so much money. We can make money. There's nothing wrong in making money, especially if you, if you use it for Krishna. The point is not to struggle to acquire it. Don't waste your time uh, too much with, with making money, you know. But, you know, use that time for making spiritual advancement by coming to the temple, associate with devotees, reading Bhagavad Gita, like that. Uh, so we can have some questions afterwards I just want to finish the purport because there's a few important points for instance this next point is very important naturally this, this, the next point is a devotee who is pure he is very dear to me Krishna says so Prabhupada explains naturally a devotee takes a bath at least twice in a day and rises early in the morning for devotional service thus he is naturally clean both inwardly and outwardly so the first point this is a very, as far as I'm concerned, controversial point. Uh, as, as, as I've been taught, uh, as a young devotee, that a brahmachari takes bath once. Most devotees, they know this. They've heard about this. A griyasa takes bath twice. And a sannyasi takes bath three times. Now, there is a quote like that. And uh, it, as far as I understand, because I'm working at Vanipedia and I'm collecting all these quotes from Srila Prabhupada, and we're also... We're also counting them, you know, how much Prabhupada said that. And how. So, the Prabhupada didn't say that verse many times. However, what he did say, especially in letters, whenever he gave second initiation or Brahminical initiation to his disciples, he said, you should take at least bath twice a day and preferably three times a day. So, it's actually very important. I've been uh, starting this practice and uh, because I, I am a very passionate person. And, uh, you know, I always got into, especially after Prashanam, I got into these huge discussions always. I still do, but because I take a bath before Prashanam, it is less. It is a, I get a little bit out of the passion. So it really helps you to get out of the, as we say, the modes of material nature. Like especially during lunch, it's like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, the passion is very high. And everybody's running around, the car's running, and the sun is up. It's passionate. So you need to a little bit cool down. The, the Brahmins also, what Prabhupada usually uh, did, he would take a bath, and then he would chant his Gayatri. And then he would take Prashana. That is kind of the Brahminical standard, you know. So, um, uh, but for my, me, personally, I'm just doing it because, you know, it's like uh, I have to do it. Because I get too much caught up in offenses and long discussions and so it's just because I'm, I, I'm just realized I'm so fallen I must follow this so some devotees they're a little bit in the Sankirtan mood like you know on Sankirtan you can't generally take bath two times a day because then you have to take bath in the middle of the street and it's not really good for preaching 
So, um, so many devotees have this Sankirtan mood that you just work for Krishna. Still, you know, I would recommend that you, you try this because they, they feel it's a waste of time, you know. It takes, if you're fast, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes. You know, you can do even more quick, but then it gets a little bit passionate. But, so it's 15 or 20 minutes. But like I said, what I noticed, if I don't do it, I get caught up in a discussion that lasts half an hour. So you save more time in the long run. This is called the mode of goodness. You get more work done in the mode of goodness because it's, it's gradual. Uh, um, uh, slow and steady wins the race. Like we, we, we all know, or maybe we don't all know it, the story about the turtle and the rabbit, right? <laughs> she speaks English? Yeah. Do you know the story about the turtle and the rabbit? <laughs> you do? So how does it go? Who wins? Do you know who wins? Oh, okay. <laughs> now there is a turtle and a rabbit and they do this race. So the, the rabbit, he is very proud and he tells the turtle, I'm going to win because turtles, they are very slow. They walk very slowly. And rabbits, they walk very, very fast. So the rabbit, he is very proud. Oh, I'm going to beat the turtle because he is very slow. So what does the rabbit do? He, he kind of takes a break, you know. He thinks the, the, the rabbit, the turtle is so slow, I'm just taking some rest. So actually, he falls asleep and he forgets about the race and the turtle wins. So that is passion, you know, that uh, we go very fast and then we go very slow. So we should be, we should be steady. And that is a mode of goodness. And as far as I understand from Prabhupada's uh, teachings, it's not really an option. The mode of goodness is not really an option. We have to go from the mode of goodness to Sudha Sattva. This is called Sattva Guna, mode of goodness. And this Sudha Sattva means pure mode of goodness. This is the spiritual uh, uh, vibration, spiritual mode. So it, it is very important that we, uh, we try for that. Like, you know, I don't want to be too critical, but... You know, I have to also be a little bit critical as I'm speaking on the Vyasa Sun and I should tell the truth. Hopefully I can do it in a palatable way. So I was, I was talking with this devotee and uh, he was asking about uh, devotional service in the mode of ignorance. So um, I was explaining that it's like when you're very angry, you know, this is the mode of ignorance. You, you kind of, you know, blaspheme devotees, but you still do the service. Like a devotee is asking you, I don't know, to clean the toilets and, and, and you go like, well, I, I can give an example of myself. Some, many times when I was in Amsterdam, the devotees would ask me to do something, and I would start to argue. I said, why don't you do it? <laughs> because it's very bad, you know, if you're a devotee, because you're supposed to be the servant. So the servant never argues back, you know. But I would just argue, like, why don't you do it yourself? Why, why, why do I have to do it? You know, and then, and then sometimes I would do it, but I would do it, like, grudgingly, like, rrr, 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 why doesn't this devotee do it? So that's in the mode of ignorance. So I was explaining like that. And then we were talking about devotional service in the mode of goodness, which is uh, yeah, what I was describing just now. You, you take a bath and you go very steady. And like Prabhupada explains here also, you wake up early in the morning. Prabhupada says, uh, uh, what was it? One who... Uh, no, it's, it's an English proverb. Early to bed, early to rise, make the body healthy and wise. Is it like that? Makes a man healthy and wise. Uh, wealthy? Wealthy and healthy? Okay. Yeah, so, um, so I, I was explaining that. And then, and then he asked, so what about devotional service in the mode of passion? And then I said, just look around. <laughs> and he immediately understood what I was saying. Because generally in ISKCON, we kind of get caught up by this mode of passion mode. And it's not, it's not per se bad, because it's kind of the preaching mood. Still, I, w I would suggest that, that we, should, we, should, we should, you know, take it down a few notches. Prabhupada says, charity starts at home. And already, uh, somewhere in 1970, he said, we should boil down the milk. So, you know, I, I think we can take it down a notch. Like, I was watching this uh, Radhanath Swami uh, Vyasa Puja video, and they were stressing this, we should take care of the devotees. And this Brahman, Brahminical devotee was explaining that preaching for us is just secondary. We do it, but we first take care of the devotees. And the preaching, it's more like a, a sadhana. It's just for fun. But it's not a, a, a goal in itself. The goal is to engage the devotees nicely, that they're happy. And in the past, we've, because Prabhupada was so much 
stressing this preaching. And, uh, but Prabhupada was never saying that we should preach, you know, at the sake of sadhana. So, but the devotees kind of really run with that. And, you know, I, I personally feel that it is the main cause of so many problems that, that came from there, you know, is that the devotees were neglecting their sadhana. So, um, yeah, we should, uh, we should really try and come a little bit more to the mother of goodness. And you also see, like I said in the beginning, we'll get more done in the end. Our preaching will ultimately be more successful. And you can just look at Radhanath Swami's temple. It's very organized and it's, it's quite an amount of goodness. I've been there many years ago and they're totally successful. In fact, they're so successful that they're, they sent out men to Calcutta, a place that nobody could ever manage. And now the whole place is booming just because they sent like three or four managers from, uh, uh, what's that place called? Chaupati. And the place is booming. It's amazing. So, you know, that, uh, that we can take an example from that. I, I feel very inspired actually by uh, the whole project and by uh, His Holiness Radnath Swami. Also, he was here a few months ago and it, I, was, I was very impressed. It was very nice. So, this is important. Uh, so getting up early and uh, and try to be clean and and of course what we will also do now shortly is chant Hare Krishna. This will take care of the inward cleanliness. Okay, let's see if we can finish the purport. A devotee is always expert because he. So the next one is he's expert. Krishna says, "My devotee who is expert is very dear to me." Prabhupada explains a devotee is always expert because he fully knows the essence of all activities of life, and is convinced of the authoritative scriptures. So Prabhupada used to say, you need to know something of everything. And everything of something. So we need to know something of everything, like Prabhupada would follow the news. But we should know everything about the Bhagavad Gita. You know, that we should know everything about. Or Bhagavatam. Not or. Mainly Bhagavad Gita and also the Bhagavatam. Bhagavad Gita is our main book. It's called ABC. So that at least we should know. And in Bhagavatam it's like a graduate study. Because you cannot go to the graduate study if you haven't done the, the you know, Primary study, yeah. Yeah, let's call it a primary study. Why not? It's good. Bhagavad Gita is primary study. So that never changes. You should always, like uh, in, in, the, in the court of law, you have the law books. So they always go back to that. You might have bylaws and sub-laws, but the main law book, they, they always have to know that. They always go back to that. So we should, we should know these things. And we should uh, be convinced of the, author, or, uh, the authoritativeness uh, the, uh, the authoritative scriptures, that the scriptures, that, are, that they are authorized, that it's true. Like the scriptures say, all stool is dirty, but cow dung is clean. So it's, it's controversial. It, it, is, uh, it, it sounds like uh, that is, you know, because cow dung is also stool. But we just have to accept it. And it's true, actually. They made a study and they saw that uh, the cow dung is antiseptic, like in India. In the villages, they put the cow dung on the villages and there is no insects. Because it, it, it gives this odor and it's antiseptic, it, it cleans the whole place. And every morning, the women, they, they put this cow dung and it's very, very sattvic. It's a mode of goodness again. It's, it's wonderful. You have this one little village in, uh, in Bengal, it's called Eka Chakra Gram. It's the appearance place of Nichananapru. And it's a wonderful village and we always go there on the festivals, there's buses going there. So you can visit that place, it's a wonderful place, and you can see what it means, you know, Sattva Guna, it's a wonderful village. Anyway, there's not so much time, but uh, yeah, we should just try to understand that this, this book, Bhagavad Gita, that it was spoken by God, and, and therefore it is, an, it is authorized, it is, it is true, what is there in Bhagavad Gita, it is spoken by God. So... Uh, then the next point, without cares. My devotee who is without cares is very dear to me. Proud explains. So the devotee never takes the part of a particular party. Therefore he is carefree. Well, yeah, that is a tough one. What comes to my mind is that whenever devotees would come to Prabhupada with problems, they would come in and complain. And then Prabhupada said, call in the other devotee. <laughs> And he would get them both in front of him and he would immediately solve the problem like that. He wouldn't entertain any complaints from one devotee. He would immediately stop the devotee. It happened a few times. And he would say, call in the other man and then he would sort it out right there. So he wouldn't take sides. Yeah, yeah. 
And and again, you have to also follow the Shastra. Like Prabhupada says, in etiquette, the main thing is age. That is the, there, there's, there's different etiquettes like uh, position and uh, spiritual advancement, like Sukadev Goswami, he was 16 years old or 7 years old. But he was uh, the, the main speaker in the assembly of many, many saintly persons because he was the most advanced spiritually. So there's different ways of seniority. So, uh, so, but the, the common sense kind of thing is that the old persons generally, they get the uh, first respect. Like, for instance, we have the Giwig. Generally, it should go first to the elderly uh, persons. Uh, but, you know, there's, like I said, there's different seniority. Like you have Sanyasi, he's supposed to be the head of the society. So generally, it goes first to the Sanyasi. But uh, it, it, it kind of depends. It's a, it's a subtle, subtle point. Um, so that, that can also be that you follow Shastra. You're not really biased. But you say, like sometimes devotees would fight, and the par- Prabhupada would say, who's older? And then, and then Prabhupada would say, so then you have to surrender to him, because he's older than you. You have to be your junior. So like that, Prabhupada would solve it. He wa- it wasn't, so it's not that you're like completely neutral, like a Mayavadi, like everything is one, but you're just not uh, like uh, swayed by something material. You just go with Shastra, and you make a decision like that. So like that, you're not biased. Like you have a judge, and he, 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 he rules according to the Shastra if he's a good judge. If he's a bad judge, then he's biased. He gets, he gets a bribe. And then according to the bribe, he makes a judgment. But a devotee doesn't do that. Like Bhakti Thakur, he's our Acharya. He used to be a judge. And he would do all his cases very, very quickly. Because he knew the scriptures. He knew exactly, very quickly, what was the matter. And he would rule. And they checked him out because they couldn't believe him. The English, they got a little envious because he got so much work done. They thought it was not possible. So they checked out his cases and every single case it was perfect ruling. They couldn't criticize him. And he got more work done than any of the other judges. It was amazing. That's a devotee. He works actually twice as hard because he feels he does it for Krishna. Okay. Uh, free from all pains. Free from all pains. He's very dear to Krishna. He's never pained because he's free from all designations. He knows that his body is a designation, so if there are some bodily pains, he's free. Yeah, specifically, Prabhupada mentions this uh, when he speaks about honor. So honor generally is related to the body. So if we're not being honored, then we shouldn't get disturbed because the honor is generally related to the body. So we shouldn't get disturbed by that because the body, it, it comes and it goes. So, and the honor also. The one day you're honored and the other day you're not honored. So, and, but it's related to the body. It's not really related to you. So, and, and, and another level, of course, is when you have pains. You know, you actually feel the pain. But if you don't really identify with, with the body, like Prabhupada used to have a toothache, ache, and he would, he would just ignore it. I don't know exactly why he did that. But uh, he would just ignore it. He wasn't, he wasn't bothered with it. He, he, he didn't, I guess he didn't want it to interfere with his service. Because it takes so much time to go to the hospital, and uh, yeah, he would just wait for the tooth to fall out, and uh, that was it. It's just amazing. He wouldn't, he wouldn't uh, identify with his body. Anyway, you're you're ready to do bhajan, right? Yeah. Okay. Sh- shall we stop here? Yeah. Yeah, I could go on, but uh, we we have a deal with the bhajans that we stop at quarter past eight. So I went a little over time because I knew they were having a party. <laughs> so, but they're here now. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry there's no time for questions. Really sorry about that. Huh? One question? Okay, we're going to have one question. So if there's one question, we can take it. Or, or a comment.
Mm. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the way I understand it, like in New York, they were having this kirtan, and then suddenly it kind of boiled out. They just went on the street, Brahmananda tells a story, and Prabhupada was standing in the window on the first floor, and he was going like this, which is the Indian way of, like, go. But they were, he was thinking that he called them back, so Brahmananda came back and was kind of asking, Prabhupada said, no, no, go, go, go. So that was the first Harinam. So the point is that the devotees were so ecstatic in chanting that they just wanted to go out. So that is kind of the point of preaching, that you become so happy with Krishna consciousness that you want to share it with others. And that is also our biggest preaching. When all arguments failed with Srila Prabhupada, he would just go like that. He said, just look at the devotees, how happy they are. And you can see the faces in these old uh, uh, pictures. Nobody could argue with that because everybody wants to be happy. So that was the, that's the ultimate argument. If all arguments fail, that is the ultimate preaching tool. So you should consider that, you know. And who doesn't want to be happy? So let us let us become happy. That's why we're going to chant now. <laughs> chant to be happy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sri Prabhupada ki jai. Sisi Rana Gopinath ki jai.